life is not easy and I don't think it's supposed to be easy but finding something that can drive you and can inspire you and can motivate you is so essential to finding happiness within you when you find passion it makes life so much easier everything makes sense and I'm here for a reason Growing up in Rio, you know, and in the beach and going around and knowing the social differences from our country, I think it all prepared me to be more savvy once I hit the road. More than anything, I always had a sense of reality, you know, and appreciation because I knew, you know, I saw it, I knew how hard it was for a lot of people and especially the, the kids, you know, that surfed with me at a, at a young age. and. I think just being so um, close to a different reality, a very different reality, just brings you always a perspective. And I always, I always truly believe that life is about perspective. You know, you always, you can always look around and feel like yours is not that bad because there's people that can overcome so much more. I began surfing at age 13. Um, 13, 14, I started at the surf school in Aquador Beach. We had all the kids from the favelas coming to the beach um, all the time to surf together. And it was a really like mix, you know, because Ipanema is in a way very rich, you know, it's very expensive to live there, but the favela is so next to it. And I think the beach was always this place, and the surf especially, it was always this place that there was a sense of equality. Everyone was just surfing. and happy and having fun and all my friends used to surf and I thought it was so cool you know and I just didn't want to be on the beach just waiting and honestly I just thought it looked so foreign and hard I was horrible I started and I I couldn't stand up for a month I was a terrible swimmer and I had asthma and it was everything I thought I couldn't do and that was probably very motivating as I love a challenge and something that's completely out of my league being able to connect um, to something in so many different places in the world. You know, it's like the land may be different, but once I hit the water, I feel at home. You know, it's like as if I was at home in most of the places in the world, if you have an ocean and a wave. It's simple, but it's complicated. There's so many variables. It's so complex. It's so powerful. It's always more powerful than you. And the lessons I take from like surfing and being in the water, especially big waves, they're lessons that, that they'll stay with me forever. My family, <laughs> I love my family. I don't, I don't get to see my family very often. Uh, my sister, is, uh, she's a psychologist. She's, she's very different from me. I, I always say that she is definitely much, much, much nicer than me. Um, she always hugs and she kisses and she's just so sweet. <laughs> Not that sweet. <laughs> My mom, I mean, a girl from, from Rio, you know, I mean, she wants me to go to college, you know, and, and I'm not even wanting to go to high school. And for many years, they had to keep up with me on Google Earth and try and understand where I was. When I left Brazil, there was no Skype. There was no things that would make connecting, you know, abroad so easy. So when I was 17, 18, 19, they barely knew about me and I didn't have all this attention. I wasn't, you know, successful professionally, so they were just kind of just sitting at home wondering what the hell was I doing? But they supported me, like, from a distance. I mean, obviously, sometimes they freaked out, but they trusted me enough that they didn't just chain me at home <laughs> in bed. And, you know, they let me go. And I think when you let somebody go and you really love them, they come back to you. There are certain places, there are big wave spots, and those places get to a certain size. So when it's getting to that certain size, that's when it's big, and that's when it's the most powerful, and that's when you see the magic happening. 
in sports when you are achieving that flow and you're under life-threatening situation, you get to another stage, a stage that it's impossible to get in any other way than being in a life-threatening situation. It's not about what you accomplished, it's what you're doing right now. You're always, every day you're starting from zero and that's how it really feels truly. It's shit, but it feels like that. You're never attached to what you did because you always, you know, you feel like you have to be doing because it's based on performance and you gotta, you gotta be performing right now. The past doesn't really count, you know, at least to, to yourself. What I'm looking for is always obviously being at the moment. You know, I think that's the magical part of it is that it demands so much of you and demands so much focus and and you're just there. You're not thinking too much. You're you're just doing. If you're in a lineup of a hundred guys and there's one woman, you stand out no matter what. <laughs> if you do really good and if you do really bad, <laughs> you're the one woman. The image was so associated to men. Um, I remember that being like the one thing that I, would, I was actually passionate to change. I mean, we needed, we, we could just get a few women in there. But in the beginning, it's easier, you know? Nobody knows you. You're not getting paid anything, and there's no pressure, and you just show up, and next thing you know, you're getting a bomb, and everyone's like, whoa, yeah, a bomb, yeah, cool. And then, you know, next show comes around, and the next year comes around, and you start getting recognized, and things started happening, and then there's, obviously, it becomes more competitive, you know, where you're not underground anymore, you're somebody that people expect to do well, or people want to criticize right away, or, so it becomes, heavier <laughs> on your shoulders. Sometimes it feels lonely. Sometimes it, it's hard because I'm not physically as strong. My performance surf-wise is not as good as the guys, you know, of course, because Stephanie Gilmore doesn't surf like Kelly Slater and Serena Williams doesn't play like Rafael Nadal. It's just life. You have to work so hard to be able to just hang out with them. <laughs> you know, bottom line, <laughs> it's not to serve like them, it's just to be there <laughs> and to endure, you know, 10 hours in the water when it's cold and it's, you know, sharky and, you know, you're on your period or whatever, you know, and, and the guys don't have that. <laughs> they don't have those problems <laughs> and we have. And you just kind of, you know, you fly in for a swell. And if that's the time of the month that you have that problem, that's your problem. <laughs> and you still got to perform. So there's differences. Yes, my training has always changed. Before the season starts, I do a four day intensive breath hold course um, in Hawaii for free diving and, and breath hold purpose. We do static holds, we do pool training at 12 feet, just tumbling and with air blowing in your face and trainers turning around and back and forth and then we go to the ocean and we do deep dives. We had a big project that Carlos first thought, you know, hey, we should go to Nazareth, this place that the world record is hold right now. After a month there, we, we got really lucky. This massive, massive storm, like the biggest they've ever seen. Um, comes onto the charts and we're all like, okay, we're here, the project's happening. <laughs> the place is very, very complicated because it doesn't have a channel, a safe zone. It's all a huge 100 meter cliff or a beach break. And, and next thing I know, the biggest wave of the day comes in. Nobody was going and it was either going to be unridden or I was going to be on it. <laughs> so in that split second, I was like, okay, let's go. So I went. I airdropped once and I airdropped twice and the third big airdrop I, I hit the water very very fast and I fell and I broke my fibula. I have like this monster coming my direction, I don't know, like, I don't know, 24 meters or something and it exploded right in front of me and I stay on the water forever. And that one I was so close to the surface that as it hit I took full impact like right where I'm trying to break the surface, the wave hits. And so it rips my jets, my life jacket off me. I went down with no life jacket and I didn't catch a breath, so I'm down there forever. And, and that's when I thought, okay, that's it. Now it's done. 
right? Because, I mean, I instantly saw black. And then next thing I know, I'm like really confused and completely out of breath and I'm super deep and I have no life jacket. And I'm in the middle of the ocean in Portugal and it's 80 feet and I'm like, okay, there's no way. I'm gonna float after this. And lucky enough, after a while I float. So once I, I, I broke the surface, I got really dizzy. I started hearing crazy sounds, like I'm really, it's for sure I'm gonna black out. For the first time after four minutes or so, Carlos thinks we, we make eye contact because he didn't know where I was. And when he got to me, he didn't realize I was about to black out and he hits me with the sled and drives over me. And when, when he goes around and he, and he sees that I missed, he realizes that I'm out that I'm not making sense anymore and I'm just like making this and I'm completely out of it. I have no life, no energy, no oxygen, no nothing. I'm about to black out at any moment. And when he gets to me again, he misses me again. He gives me his hand and I give my hand and we touch, but we don't hold. So I just feel him touching me and he's gone again. <laughs> and then he kind of, he's so desperate, he kind of stops the jet ski and he has enough time where the rope stays around me and he just screams at me, just grab the rope. And there is this footage of me grabbing the rope and I grab the rope, I don't know how, very strong, because he turns on the jet ski towards the beach and drives for a little while as I'm grabbing and I'm already blacked out, my head is full on in the water and I'm just riding along until like it opens and then my body floats and I'm lifeless. and. And so he sees that and he's like, well, you know, next time I see her again, my, my body sinks. Next time if she pops up, I have to jump. So next time he sees me, he sees my body, he, he, he comes with the jet ski, he zooms the jet ski that direction and jumps like Spider-Man on top of my body. And we roll towards the sand. And then a lifeguard that was from our team and was on the sand to pick up boards actually picked up my body <laughs> and uh, they both drag my body up the sand and, and Carlos ex executes uh, CPR for around two minutes or two minutes and a half and then brings me back to life. If anything, like after Portugal, I felt like people connected in a very strong way to me. You know, a lot of people, I had some really great messages. One message that I, I, I thought it was amazing, um, this, this Portuguese uh, woman uh, told me that she was on the cliff. She sent me a, a Facebook message, private message, and she told me she was on the cliff and that she wanted me to, to thank me because um, her husband dragged her and, and his mother to Nazareth that day to watch the surf. And he was, he's battling cancer and they were on the cliff and it completely changed his life because he's fighting so hard for his life. So he saw somebody else fighting for their life and it made a difference. <laughs>